Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby, and today we're going to stay in 1 Peter, as I told you yesterday, and today we'll be studying chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And the message there is to live in the Spirit of God, and that will bring ridicule from the world. But the Lord will redeem those who take refuge in him. Before we begin, though, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and share it. It's important to share it. Share the Word of God. And go through our playlists. See what's there for you. There'll be always something there for you that you can learn from and grow with. Now, let's say our prayer. Our prayer is taken from Psalm 34, uh, starting at verse 8. And we'll read through to verse 22. So, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many good days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and slaves and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The word of God. Well, my friends, now, 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead, for this is why the gospel was preached, even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way that God does. The word of God. Well, let's go back over that in a little bit and see what we can learn from it. So, since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. We have to live in the flesh and we are going to suffer in the flesh. We're going, as we'll find out a little later, we're going to be maligned. We are going to be persecuted. We are going to be, oh, what's the word? You're, well, you know what I mean. So, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Remember we read yesterday from Romans chapter seven, verse 25, and St. Paul said, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. The way of the world, as it wants to lead us, is a sinful way. And St. Peter has outlined some of those ways. So, 
so as to live for the rest of time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. Now, we still have to live in the flesh. We still have these bodies. And we still have our temptations and our desires. But if we live by the will of God, we will ignore those temptations and those desires. We'll live the life that God wants us to live. Yes, we have to live in the world. But we don't have to be part of the world. We don't have to join them in, as St. Peter calls it, their debauchery. But they'll malign us. They'll persecute us. They'll ridicule us. That was the word I wanted, ridicule us. So, with this respect, to this they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they malign you. There you have it. They malign us, persecute us, and ridicule us. No, it's like the world says, well, if you want to get along in the world, you got to go along with it. No. No. You don't have to go along with the world. You paint your own path. You can take your own road. And here's your roadmap right here, the Word of God. So, ah, but they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached, even to those who are dead, that though judged in his flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. What does that mean? Well, he's speaking of the dead who are dead spiritually. But if they hear the law, if they hear the word, if they hear the gospel, and they see you and I living that gospel and being happy doing it with good and fruitful lives. They may live, they may take up a life. They may repent and take up a life in the spirit of God. Now yesterday, remember, we read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, when Jesus said, well, I have my notes here. I won't go from memory. Let your flesh, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Those words were spoken by Jesus Christ. And his command, a, a, a calling, a command to you and I to provide that good example that will lead others to Christ. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, I'll see you all again. And may God bless us all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the